Hello friends, welcome to today's tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we have saw about the Kafka introduction part. In this tutorial, we are going to cover the high level architecture of the Kafka. So let us see what are the things we are going to cover in this tutorial. The very first thing we will see the Kafka common terms such as brokers, records, topics, producers and the consumers. Then we will see the high level architecture for the Kafka cluster and the Zookeeper. So let us start with the Kafka common terms. So before de digging deep into the Kafka architecture, let's first go through some of its common terms. So the very first term is the brokers. A Kafka server is also called a broker or a book bro brokers are responsible for reliably storing the data provided by the producers and making it is available to the consumers. So what it means whenever any data is published through the producer, then it is a store in one of the server where the uh, Kafka broker has been deployed or uh, running. So broker is responsible for uh, storing all the messages which is coming from the producer. And then once the consumer is available or it is ready, then it will get uh, say it send the message to the consumer. Now let us see the second term records. What is records? A record is the message or an event that go gets stored in, in the Kafka. So essentially it is a, a, it is the data that travel from the producer to consumer through Kafka. A record contains the key, a value, timestamp and optional metadata headers. So record is nothing, it is just a message which is produced from the producer and it gets stored into the Kafka uh, broker or the server. And then finally it is uh, go to the consumer when consumer is available. So this is the record. Now there are some of the things like record contains, like it contains the key, it contains the value, timestamp and some of the optional metadata headers. So now let us see the another thing another uh, is the topics so what is topics kafka divides its messages into the categories called topics in simple terms a topic is like a table in the database and the messages are the row in that table so if you know if you know about the relational database so it is it is related to the table and we store all the data in the form of uh, like rows we have the multiple rows and the columns so you can relate with that RDBMS uh, here, like a topic is like a database and whatever the message is, or you can say the records is uh, considered to be a row. Okay, so that is the topic. Now each message that Kafka receives from the producer is associated with the topic. And the consumer can subscribe to that topic to get notified when a new message are added to that particular topic. So whatever the message uh, produced from the producer's side, it is associated to the one of the topics. So it will go to one particular topic. So it means that there might be a more number of the topics in the Kafka broker. So once any producer uh, wanted to send some message, it has to uh, mention the topic and in that same topic it will get published. And then finally, the consumer has to subscribe that particular topic to get all the notified or get that message from uh, all the messages from that particular topic. Now a topic can have the multiple subscribers that read the message from it. So one topic can have the multiple consumers. Okay, why this is the meaning of this thing. So it can be have the one single consumer or the single subscriber or it can have the multiple subscriber. That means the multiple consumers can read the same, same message. So in the Kafka cluster, a topic is identify its name and it must be unique. So it, there will be no duplication between the topic. Topic must be unique in the Kafka cluster. Messages in the topic can be read as optional as needed. Unlike the traditional messaging system, messages are not deleted after the consumption. If you know about the normal like queuing based messaging system, there the thing is like once the message is consumed by one of the consumer, then that message is will be deleted. But in this Kafka, there is a no such thing. It, it is completely optional if you uh, if, or you can say it is configurable. So if you wanted that once the message get consumed, it should be deleted, then you can configure like that. But it is not a mandatory part. 
so even even if you don't want to delete that message then you can retain that message in the kafka broker or on that particular topic so instead kafka retain the message for the configurable amount of the time or until the storage size is exceeded so there are two ways we can store the uh, messages uh, even after somebody is consumed uh, we can make it like or do the some configuration for this particular amount of the time that um, message will be retained in that kafka or it might be possible like the uh, storage size where the messages has been stored has exceeded like size is not left anymore free size so in that case the message will be uh, like deleted kafka performance is effectively constant with respect to the data size so storing the data for the long time is perfectly fine so that is one of the major advantage of kafka its performance will never be gone uh, hampered it is effectively constant with respect to data size now if you see this is the some uh, diagram uh, kafka topics there are publisher like multiple publisher publisher 1 publisher 2 publisher 3 publisher 4 so all these publisher are pu publishing the messages to the message broker or in in this case the kafka broker and that message is uh, sent back like sent to the consumer who subscribe to that particular topic so here you can see there are three topics in the kafka broker sales Uh, inventory and uh, campaign the subscriber one or you can say the consumer one subscribe to the topic of sales then that subscriber will only receive the messages of that particular topic in this case it will uh, it will receive the message from the sales only so it will not receive the any of the message from the inventory or the campaign so that is the uh, thing in this diagram you can uh, understand by looking at now come into the producers producer are the application that publish or the write the record to the kafka so producer is just uh, uh, one of the service or the application which is hosted uh, in the separate server which is responsible for sending a messages to the kafka or you can say to write messages to the kafka so now come to the another uh, important terms like consumers consumers are the application that subscribe to read and process the data from the kafka topics so so all the subscribers is called consumers in the kafka so whatever uh, they subscribe or they subscribe to that particular topic then it will start receiving that all the messages so that is the consumers so consumers subscribe to one or more topics and consume the published messages by pulling the data from the brokers so brokers here is the kafka now in the kafka the producer and the consumer are fully decoupled and agnostic of each others which is the key design element to achieve the high scalability that kafka is known for so both the producers and consumers are decoupled both are not coupled or tightly coupled so because of this we can achieve the high scalability uh, uh, high scalability as per our requirement for example producer never need to wait for the consumer so it means that producer uh, wanted to send some of the messages but at the same time the consumer is not available at that point of time then still it is perfectly fine because a producer and the consumer both are separate entity and producer send the message to the kafka broker and the kafka broker is responsible for storing the messages uh, and once the consumer uh, get up or uh, come back from the dawn state so then it will uh, start consuming that messages so that is the advantage of uh, the kafka now come to the high level architecture at the high level applications like producers send a message to kafka broker and these messages are read by the other applications called consumers so messages get stored into in a topic and the consumers subscribe to that topic to receive the receive the new messages okay so now next we have the kafka cluster kafka is deployed as a cluster of one or more servers so what it means like uh, we have the number of the servers where kafka is are uh, deployed in all the service uh, server so set of the server or the kafka brokers we call as kafka cluster so where 
where each server is responsible for running one Kafka broker. Now next we have the Zookeeper. So Zookeeper is distributed key value store and is used for coordination and storing the configurations. So it is highly optimized. It is highly optimized for reads. Kafka uses the Zookeepers to coordinate between the Kafka brokers. Zookeepers maintain the metadata information about the Kafka cluster. We will be looking into this in the detail in the latter part. Okay, so in the latter part, uh, we will look what is the Zookeeper, what is the role of the Zookeeper. So in the higher view, you can understand like it contain, it is used to store some of the information related to the Kafka clusters. So when uh, when the message is sent from the producer, it goes through the one, it is stored into the one Kafka, uh, one of the Kafka broker in the Kafka cluster. So that uh, that all the information like in which Kafka broker that message has been stored and all such type of related information is a stored into the Zookeeper. So we will see in the latter part of this uh, Kafka session. So let us see there is some diagram diagram how the things are working. So this is the high level architecture of Kafka. It contains the multiple producers, which is responsible for uh, publishing the message to Kafka cluster. So here you can see there are total three brokers in the, in the Kafka cluster and Zookeeper is always in the connection, con connection with that uh, clusters. So, okay, so these are the like basic of uh, high level architecture of Kafka. So let us first summarize what are the things we have covered in this uh, tutorial. So we have uh, covered the Kafka common terms. So these are the common terms of the Kafka. Then we saw the high level architecture of the Kafka uh, or the Kafka cluster and the Zookeeper. So in the next video, we are going to cover the uh, deeper portion of the Kafka architecture, how internally it works, about like partitions and uh, many more things like uh, in the details we are going to cover in the next tutorial. So thank you so much for watching this and bye.